رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Usually a reminder after Fajr is not very well comprehended. But I believe in this country the people, inshallah, are used to going to work and doing their activities. So inshallah we will not take a lot of time and inshallah an hour and a half would be more than enough. I'll make it shorter inshallah. Allah Azza wa Jal has warned us of our fierce enemy, which is a shaitan. Verily, he is your enemy, therefore take him as an enemy. It is common knowledge among all Muslims that our enemy is the shaitan. Yet this knowledge, if not put into practice, it has no value at all. You could be facing or suffering from a chronic illness. You know the symptoms and you know the cure. The doctor tells you avoid the following foods. You have to go on this diet, otherwise you're gonna die. You know them by heart, yet you still consume them. Will you ever recover? Never. You know the medication that you have to take every single day but you never take them you will never recover and you will die now the shaitan we have to know everything about him because you cannot fight an enemy that you do not see and you do not know anything about and that is why Allah Azza wa Jal explained to us a lot about our enemy how he was created when his enmity started before the creation of Adam it started his enmity with us and the steps he take the steps he takes to lure us to his dungeons of sin and of displeasing Allah Azza wa Jal there are so many concepts that we can talk about shaitan it is Needless to say that he is with us 24-7. It is needless to say that he knows us inside out. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He runs in our veins like blood runs in our veins. To the extent that the Prophet ﷺ was once walking with his wife Safiya. He was doing i'tikaf, she came to visit him in the masjid and he was walking with her, taking her home. When two men of the Ansar saw him with a woman covered from head to toes. So they changed their direction. The Prophet said, hold on, she is Safiya bin Huyay bin Akhtab, may Allah be pleased with her, my wife. They said, oh Prophet of Allah, do you think we're going to doubt you? And he said, Shaitan runs in your veins and I was afraid that he may cast something in your heart that would nullify your Islam this is how far Shaitan would go never underestimate Shaitan and never overestimate your Iman look throughout the course of history how many people he managed to lure and throw into hell and if you think that you have a degree, and if you think you have years of experience on your CV, then think again. Shaitan's CV runs from Adam's time to today. Look at how many people he threw in hell with his seduction and with his bad deeds. So how can we avoid Shaitan? If you know his steps, with the grace of Allah, you can avoid falling into his traps. And scholars say, still have 
an hour and 25 minutes. Scholars say that there are hurdles for shaitan. Subhanallah. He has a number of phases he anticipates, he waits for you. The highest for him, which is his top target, is... What is the highest thing that he wants? And other than that, khalas. Shirk. This is the biggest target he has. If he achieves this, he gets his bonus with his enemy, with his uh, uh, soldiers. So he anticipates to the individual. Now, shirk is associating others with Allah. And this is not the only thing he wants. He wants to nullify your Islam. So whether you become a mushrik, you associate others with Allah, or you become a kafir, a disbeliever, someone who denies anything of Allah's rulings, or you become a hypocrite, a munafiq, a real munafiq, not the type of practical nifaq, but the actual nifaq that belongs in the heart, which nullifies Islam. Or even if you don't believe in anything, if you become an atheist, all of this is okay with him. And this goes without saying that Allah forgives all kinds of sins except this. Whoever comes with something like this on the Day of Judgment, he's doomed in hell for eternity. But how can we fight this hurdle? By believing in Allah Azza wa Jal. By accepting Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah, Tawheed al-Asma'i wa sifat And you all know these types of Tawheed. Tawheed al-Rububiyyah is to worship Allah Azza wa Jal by believing in that He is the Creator, the giver of life and death, that He is the provider, that He is the sustainer and the owner of this universe. So this is Rububiyyah. I am worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal, believing that what comes from Him is only from Him. Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah is the opposite. Is worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal with my own acts. So I do not give my own forms of worship, whether they are through the heart, through the tongue, or through my actions, except to Allah. So I only pray to Allah, fast to Allah, give zakat for the sake of Allah. I fear Allah, I hope in what Allah has. I have my trust and confidence in Allah. All of this is part of al-uluhiyya. And tawheed asma wa sifat to believe and aff to affirm the attributes and beautiful names of Allah Azza wa Jal as was reported to us in the Quran and Sunnah. So if a believer does this, then I wouldn't say our friend, but our enemy would move on to hurdle number two. What is the most wanted and sought after shirk for shaitan if he skips this hurdle, where would he wait for us and try to make us fall into Riyah? Well, Riyah is part of shirk. So there is two types of shirk. Shirk Akbar and Shirk Asghar. And we would not go into details. As you know that there is nifaq, hypocrisy, that is major and minor. And there is kufr, that is major and that is minor. All of these things are explained elsewhere, inshallah. But true, riya, showing off, boasting, would be considered one of the hurdles, but it is with a shirk as a whole. But bid'a, innovation is true. And a lot of us look or belittles the bid'a. Eh? What, what's wrong with carrying, you know, something that we count the tasbih with? What's wrong with having, you know, uh, prayer beads with 1,000 pieces doing Allah, 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 1,000 times. I have a, a car in, in Saudi Arabia, it's called GMC, Suburban, that makes this sound when you turn it on. The people said that this is a special car for mutawwa' because it, it remembers Allah when you turn it on. So, Allah, 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 Allah. So, one says, 
What's wrong with a little of innovation here or there? Well, innovation